tonight. You are a hot mess. And this is exactly where your father was when he put that first needle in his arm. A father's addiction, 37 arrests. Do you hate him? I don't think that anybody else has been capable of breaking my heart the way he Who they know is the addict, the jailbird. Years of heartbreak, broken promises. All prisons don't have bars. Some of them are in your mind. I know where you are. The pit of hell. They tell me that your grandmother and possibly your dad are on their way here. What happens if he comes home from prison? If you put it in your system again, you are going to be dead. Next. Life happens to everybody, even me. Life didn't care that I had written a bunch of books, traveled the world speaking, married the love of my life, lived in my dream home, and made a bunch of money. And then life left me broke and feeling broken. The only way to get back was to do the work. I did my work and put my life back together piece by piece. I am Ianla Van Zandt, and I am here to help you do your work. I'm here in Chicago at the Cook County Jail. A family wrote me, a grandmother and four of her adult grandchildren. Their father's in here. In fact, he's been here most of their lives. 37 arrests over 24 years. He may be getting out today. His mother's down the street in the courthouse. Our cameras are ready whether he gets out or not. There's a lot of healing that has to be done when you've got children of incarcerated parents. William Moorhead is a 48-year-old heroin addict. This once promising college student became a struggling, addicted father, raising four children in Chicago's Cabrini Green projects. His drug habit kept him locked up and apart from his children for most of their lives. 1999, convicted for burglary and possession of a stolen vehicle. 2001, for possession of drugs. 2003, retail theft, just to name a few. Despite his absence and the fact that his children's mother completely dropped out of their lives 17 years ago, Will, Carissa, Mia, and Crystal have excelled in life thanks to their grandmother, Verdi, who raised them. At any moment, William is getting out of jail and coming home to his family. I need to work fast so his children are ready to see him. I'm going to start by talking with William's three daughters. Good morning. Hi. Mm -hmm. How are you today? I'm Great. Fine. God, you guys are so polished. <laughs> Thank you. Looking real Thank good you. on the outside. Must Thank be a lot of crud on the inside. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through. What have you been through? Just living without my parents in my life. Yeah. Tell me about this picture. That's the only picture we have with our father. The only picture you have. And he wasn't even present. Nope. No, you can tell, right? But you guys are just smiling. We're just so happy that he's there. Just to be around him. The first Thanksgiving. That's the only thing he came to. And when you think about that, Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, tell me about that. My grandma threw me a birthday party for my seventh birthday. It was the first party I had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had money. So my dad said, OK, Carissa, you got to hide your money. You got to hide it so nobody can get it. He said, just put it right under there. So I slipped it under there, OK? Went upstairs, went to sleep, woke up. The first thing on my mind is my birthday money. Run downstairs, and it's gone. I knew he took it. Go back there and be seven. And tell me about the heartache of your daddy stealing your birthday money. <laughs> I don't think that anybody else has been capable of Breaking my heart the way Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. And it's recurrent. And it doesn't just happen once. It happens over and over again. Tell me how it happens over and over again. <laughs> he apologizes. I trust him. Tell me what he does. What does he do? Tell me. He makes promises. Yeah. <laughs> he tells me everything is going to be OK. He's going to get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he 
He's trusting God. He gives feed me that, and I believe it every time. And then? <laughs> and then he breaks my heart. Yeah. Baby, don't take it personally. He wasn't taking your money, baby. He was feeding his disease. And until you get that, you're not going to be able to sit in the heartbreak. Don't take it personally. And don't hide your tears. Not anymore. What disturbs me with this family is nobody's talking about what they're feeling. Because there comes a moment when you have to vote for you. Vote for you. Your grandmother is at the courthouse now. Because your father may be getting out today. What are you going to say to him? He's coming home again, choosing drugs, possibly, again. What do you want to say to him? Right now, I don't care that he's coming out of jail again. I think it'll be the same way, but. No buts, look at me. What? I think it'll be the same way and. That's what I expect. What are you going to say to him? Come on, say it right here. So what you going to do this time? Right. Get we in his face. Done anything. Get in his face right we now. You haven't done anything for us. We've made it this far. And I understand that you have a disease, but. Don't understand him. Vote for you. Never mind him. He wasn't there. Yes, he wasn't there. Tell him about the hell you've been through. You don't. Tell him. He doesn't know. Tell him. Come on. It's coming out. You're going to have to swallow all of that poison again. Say it now. Get it out. And I hate looking like you. Mm. I hate looking like him. Do you hate him? Yeah, it's OK. It's such a strong word, but it's so much pain. Yeah. So which is worse, the word or the pain? What if the word will release the pain? I just wish. One picture. That's all you got. Tell him. Tell him how you feel. Not the father you hold in your heart. This man right here. You tell him. I don't hate him. Tell the, him how you feel. You don't feel. hate this to him. Do you, that's not our father. That is not a father. This is not a father. You can see it in his face. You know how daddy looks when he is being a daddy. What are you going to say? That's tell not him? my father. What do you need to say to the man that's coming out of jail today, possibly? I love you. But I got to do what works for me now. Yes. Because you cannot put your life on hold waiting for your father to get healed. You say you want to get married and have children, but well, my, I want my father to be there. What if that can never happen? <sighs> Looking at it now, I just feel like I won't feel complete. Well, you got to get complete, baby. Now, you say you don't trust men. Tell me about that. I wouldn't even give them that chance. What chance? To even, like, try to hurt me. What are you going to do when your dad gets clean? You can't get married and have children because your daddy wasn't there. You got issues and whatever you doing because your daddy was You don't trust men. What you going to do when he get clean? <laughs> you have set it up so that it's not OK for him to be OK. Because once he gets OK, beloved, you have no more excuses. So what do you do then? Build myself up. Why can't you do it now? I didn't know where to start. I don't. That's what we got to talk about. You are a hot mess. And this is exactly where your father was when he put that first needle in his arm. You have already lost your children.
I'm in Chicago to support a family in crisis. William Moorhead has been battling heroin addiction for more than 24 years. He has spent most of his children's lives behind bars. William is about to be released. I want his family to be ready this time. Earlier, I felt the heartbreak of William's three daughters. Do you hate him? It's such a strong word, but it's so much pain. Yeah. Now, I want to speak to his son, Will, who admits that his father's absence has left him on the edge and angry. At times, he lashes out at others and often feels completely numb. When did you become the man of the family? Uh, I, I was always the man of the family, I guess. Age? Uh, uh, since six years old. A lot of responsibility. Yeah. Did you do well? Yeah, I mm. think so. <laughs> <laughs> you hadn't you. even been a boy. Look How are you going to be a man? Hmm. You started at a young age being worried about some things that you shouldn't have had to worry about, like? I have three younger sisters, uh, Mia, Crystal, and Carissa, and I, I sometimes feel that I have to be more of a guidance, like a father type figure. Why? Uh, Who told you that? No, no one, no one told so me. So you that. made that up? Uh, yeah, yeah, I made, I made it up. Why? Because I want them to succeed. And what made you think that you giving up your childhood would support your sisters in succeeding? I didn't notice, you know, that I would, I, that's what I was giving up. I really sense that this young man is being crushed under the weight of what he took on in his father's absence. He is so afraid of letting everyone down. His grandmother, his sisters, even the father he feels has abandoned him. My father, he's always said that he was proud of me. I did also learn from my father not to make the mistakes that he made. Oh, but you're at the edge. It was 24 when he started. How old are you? I am 24. Yeah. You're right where he started. So here's what I want to ask you, because you know the ravishes of addiction. What are you addicted to? Work. I have to keep going. Because if you stop. There is no stopping. If you stop. I, I will stop when I'm happy. Can't be happy when your heart is closed. Mm -hmm. See, let me just say something to you. I know where you are. The pit of hell. Because any time you can't feel your heart, you can't share your heart. So it's like dead man walking. Dead man walking, dead man doing. Dead inside, that's hell. Would that be accurate? Yeah, it's, it, you hit it on point. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not there, you know? There's a, it's, I have no feeling, no emotion. Your dad is taking all the weight here. Yeah. Where's your mom? Where's your mom? Okay, see, this is the heart right here. So let me ask you this. If you trust me in just this moment, I promise you, you won't lose your dignity. Talk to me about the missing mom, because dad is taking all the weight. And there's some things, Will, that weren't his responsibility. Give me your hands. We're gonna open the heart together, okay? Just close your eyes. Keep them close to me and the heart will open. It'll open. No, no, let me hold you, let me hold you. Will, can I hold you? Can I hold you? Is it okay? It's okay. Come on, come on. Just come right in here. No, you're not good, Will. No, you're not, Will. You are not good. I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. You are a hot mess. And this is exactly where your father was when he put that first needle in his arm. This is where he was. Shut down. Acting like he was OK when he wasn't. Trying to numb the pain, Will. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your mother. Uh, I, I don't know where she is right now. At this moment in time, I don't know where she is. Has being with grandma 
fill the hole that losing mommy opened That's, up? Yeah, when I think of my mom, I think of her. And it, it, it hurts me, yeah. it hurts me. Well, you're gonna have to go there. You're gonna have to go to the place that scares you the most, to sit in that heartache and just let your heart break. Otherwise, it's anger, it's rage. Well, it'll turn into acting out. It'll kill you. So where do you start? Acknowledgement is the first step toward healing. You've got to acknowledge that something exists so that you can then feel it, deal with it, and heal it. Feel, deal, heal. Give me a hug. Mm. <laughs> mm. Good for you. Yep. I am probably going to tell you a level of truth that nobody has ever told you because you are fighting for your life. Will, Carissa, Mia, and Crystal Moorhead are only four of the more than six million children whose parents battle drug addiction. Their father, William, has been in and out of jail for the last 24 years. His most recent arrest for trespassing and burglary has kept him locked up for the past 13 months. So I called you back because they tell me that your grandmother and possibly your dad are on their way here. So we'll find out. Oh, there's Grandma. Hello. Hi, Grandma. Sit down here. Sit down here. I have bad news. He's not getting out today. He's not? <sighs> what happened? What did they say? They continued it again. Again? <laughs> the usual. Yep. How did that feel when you heard the news? He's not getting out today. I was disappointed. I knew he wasn't getting out. I hate this. You always think it's going to change. We don't think it will. And that's just like what reality we have to face. After they learned that their father would not be coming home yet again, I decided to give these children some space. In the meantime, I want to talk to their grandmother, Verdi. She has been through hell, but she kept these children together and she let them know they were loved. So here we are. Here we are. Tell me about any guilt you have about being the mother of a heroin addict. I, I feel hurt. I feel sometimes what didn't I do and what could I have done to prevent this? So this is what I got here now. I've got a drug-dependent man that produced four children. This is, this is rough business right here, but you know, all things are possible. He's been in jail practically all of that life. Your son fell off the edge when he was 24. Well, it's 24. Mm -hmm. He's right where his father stood, and we want to catch him before he falls. He's doing it right now, you know. He may not be doing drugs. You know, you don't have to stick a needle in your arm to be addicted. Mm -hmm. You can be addicted to a feeling. I think he's addicted to anger and control. And he's made his whole life about taking care of his sisters and making you proud so that you don't have to fail again. That's a responsibility. He's been, he's been pushing himself ever since he was a little boy. That's how he's trying not to be like his father, mm -hmm. but he is his father's son. This is what he said to me. I have family and no direction. Listen, they look good on the outside. I know, I know, I but know. But that's what they're concerned with, the outside. They're outside. And I'm here for the inside. They have no foundation, no structure. And uh, despite your best, Miss Verdi, they don't even have a self. That's why you're here, I believe. I told them, and I'm about to cry. It's okay, Miss Birdie. Oh, Miss Birdie, you need to cry. 
You need to cry, Miss Verdi. You need to cry. You have carried more than your share for long enough. What a gift you are. Do you know how many grandmothers are where you are right now, Miss Verdi? Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands are raising their hand with you right now. I've done what I can do. I did the best I can do. Now I gotta let go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're <laughs> I got something for you. Your history. Just hours ago, the Moorhead children found out that their father would not be released from jail today. I think it's time to confront their painful past head on, so I will take them back to where they grew up, Cabrini Green, a place once considered one of the nation's most dangerous neighborhoods. When you walk through here, do you remember this? I remember some of the struggles that a lot of the families that are still here have to go through, you know? Some of the families, what about you? You still going through the struggle. What makes you different? We had structure. We got out physically. You got out? Physically. But mentally. We it's a big chunk of us that's still there. The Moorhead children could only give me one photo of their father, one picture in all of their history. But I found a few more. One when they were in grade school. One, when they were heading off to prom and college. As a matter of fact, I found 35 photos, mug shots, of William Moorhead. I got something for you. I want you to see. What is that? What? Wow. Your history. Look at the years. 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. And what do you say to this man? Yeah, your history doesn't define you, but unless you get real honest about what it feels like, it will confine you because all prisons don't have bars and walls and keys. Some of them are in your mind. What would you say to him? This one right here, what would you say to him? I hate the person the drugs made you become. Yeah. Come here. Tell him. Right there, right there in that face. Tell him. He needs to know. What do you have to say to him? I still care, even though I say that I don't. He wasted his whole life. Come here, baby girl. This one right here, come here. What do you have to say to him? What do you have to say to him? How, how could you do this? to me. I feel like I deserve a father. I feel that there's something wrong with me because I wasn't worth enough for him to come back. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> worth enough for you to ever come back and stay. Baby girl, this one right here. It's not my what do you father. say to him? Who is that? That's Harold. Neither one of these. That's not him. That's, he, it is him. It is heroin. him. It's the choices that he made in the midst of a disease. It is him. And you've got to learn how to be okay with that. William, come here. This is your future if you don't get real clear because you know what? Your father was angry with his father. And he had a mother. Here's your mother. There's your mother. No input. Here, I'm giving it to you. What do you this. do with it? 
Well, I'd hang it up in my, in my wall. <laughs> would you hang it up hell on your wall? Yeah. You know what I would do? Oh, Let me show you what I would do. Let me show you what this I would do. This is my father. That's what I would do. I'd start right there. Yeah. That's what I would do. Because I'm not going to carry this mess any further. Because this is not going to be me. Not me. But maybe you do want to hang it on your wall. I don't want this on my wall. <laughs> Take it down. Ugh. Not the person, but the behavior. The history. This is trash. Take it down. You don't want to save that. You don't want to memorialize that. Get that. Tear it up. We're going to fry this. I like it. You know, because fire transforms. Fire changes things from one thing to another, right? I want to make sure every year is destroyed. Every piece. There you go. Come on, baby. What do you say? I Basically, there's so much hurt, you know, that's bottled down in me, my sisters, and probably in him, you know. What if what you can do for him is this? Every image that you have of him, every memory that you have of him, every complaint, every hurt, every anger, what if you just put it in there? What if that is the best thing you can do for him, is to let that go? What if? That is the fire of forgiveness. It is a hot night in Chicago, and William Moorhead did not come home to his children. But you know what? Now they're ready for him. And when he does come home, I'm going to make sure that he is ready for them. Because who they know is the addict, the jailbird the failure, the heartbreaker. That's who they know, but that's not who you are. Two weeks after I met with the Moorhead children, their father, William, was released from jail. For the next three months, he will be living at a safe haven, a Chicago shelter that helps people get back on their feet. I am probably going to tell you a level of truth that nobody has ever told you. Because you are fighting for your life. Exactly. Are you in? Yeah. You're in? I'm in. All the way? All the way. In just a few hours, he will come face to face with his mother and his four children. I am here to interrupt the pattern that has led him in and out of jail over 30 times. What's different now? Why now? My children. I asked myself, have I even admitted that I could do better? Or did I just think that this is who I am? And then I realized, you know, I can do better. I don't have to stay like this. Mm. When did you abandon you? A long time ago. I come to realize that um, me not fulfilling my dad's expectations birthed a rebellious spirit. I was supposed to be like him, businessman. He was successful, very successful. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And not able to feel his shoes was like, I can't pass him, I can't do this. You believed that you were a disappointment to your dad. I was. A disappointment, a failure. Failure. Is that true? Yes, it is. Is it really true, or have you failed at some things, disappointed some people, and failed to measure up to the expectations your father had for you? What drove you to the addiction? Because it suppressed the feelings. It suppressed it. It, it, it put, took me to a place where I didn't have to think about it. I spent a day with your children, and I want to share with you 
some of the things that they've shared with me. So that when you see them today, I want you to know the truth about where they are. I was always the man in the family. I, I sometimes feel that I have to be more of a guidance, like a father type figure. I have no feelings, no emotion, you know? This is exactly where your father was when he put the first needle in his arm. Shut down. Acting like he was okay when he wasn't. Trying to numb the pain, Will. I don't think that anybody else has been capable of breaking my heart the way that he yeah. is. He tells me everything is going to be okay. I believe it every time. And then, and then he breaks. Yeah. That's a massive impact, negative, that I had on him. Let me say this to you. Give me a hand. You have already lost your children. Yeah, I know. You've already lost that. But you can build a new relationship with them. Tell me what's happening. It's, it's um, that's hard to, to take. That's, I always thought I had them. But you, not, but you not, weren't there. I know I was there. I don't want to face that. But you, you gotta I'm face facing it. I'm facing it. You almost have to act like these are four new people that you don't know so that you can be a new man that they don't know. Because who they know is the addict, the jailbird, the failure, the heartbreaker. That's who they know. But that's not who you are. I appreciate that you never gave up. And as, as hard as it was to face your babies in the midst of your disease, that you kept coming back. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that finally you give yourself permission to cry out of your pain. I will. I will. We're going to go meet you. These young people, the young more heads. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dad. I did it. <laughs> if you put it in your system again, you are going to be dead. Hello, more heads. Hello. Oh. I bought you a present. Hey, Dad. I did it. <laughs> So, I've been talking to your dad. I shared with him your thoughts and your feelings. And we're not here to beat him up. We're not here to, to make him feel bad. We are here to share our hearts and our thoughts and our experiences so that everybody here can heal. Yeah? So, who wants to start? We all love you. We have. You have a special place in each one of our hearts. Like, since I'm, since my mom wasn't there, every time you came back, it gave us hope that you would come back. We're old enough to understand that it's more than you. It's, it's, it's a problem. It's, it's a disease that you can't fix on your own. But I won't tolerate you going back, because I see how strong. I can see how strong you are when you're clean. And baby girl, what about you? I don't hate you. I love you unconditionally. And I just hate what the drug has done to you. And I know that if it's something that you want, then you can do it. What about you? We know that you have potential. I just hope that you reach your potential. Before this experience, yeah. I've pictured myself as a little girl. I've learned that 
instead of me being the little girl waiting at the window for her dad to come back all healed, I have to let go of like the dream that I have and move on. Because as long as I'm holding on to that, I, I can't successfully move on entirely in my life. All those years I've been sitting in prison, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sitting there with a sober mind. I'm not familiar with this new guy. I don't know where. William has always lived a life trying to please others. I justified it in the fact that as long as my family is OK, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all right. Excuse Forget. me? What, what did he say? As long as his family's OK, he's all right. Because this is the exact same words you spoke to me the first day I met you. Mm -hmm. Same exact words. It ain't about me, it's about my sisters. I got to make sure they are OK. And look where it took him. And I told you that day, you are exactly where your father was at this time of his life, mm -hmm. right on the edge. Listen to what he's saying to you. I had a lot of resentments to your granddaddy. You and know? he made you feel he what? He made me feel like I, you know. What did we talk about? You were a what? A failure. And a? Disappointment. And a less than? Less, less than a man. I should have left him. Mm. I should have left him. Mm. I hate that you suffered. You know, he didn't know how to be a father. That's why I had always said that when I have a boy, we're going to be friends. Did you know how to be his father? No, no, not at all. I didn't. Let him know I didn't know how to be your father. I didn't know. It's all good, man. Share with them what your truth is. It's, it's what the addiction was about for you. When it, it 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 helped me suppress, you know, reality. Because mm. when I was sober up, there comes responsibility. There comes father. There comes me taking your money, not taking advantage of the opportunities that was presented me. That's why I told you it's important that you do what you want to do. Find your passion. I'm just now finding mine. Wow. Look at you. He's going to do it this time. Because you know what? If you ever go back to drugs, I'm going to tell you right now, you will not make it. You will be dead. I've watched how you've been saved. I've watched how God sent me into your life to heal your children. If you put it in your system again, you are going to be dead. Do it. Minute by minute, hour by hour, if you have to. You got to make that decision right now in the presence of your children and refuse to give up on you again. Please. I don't want to have this. I don't want to have to bury my duty. <laughs> Make it now. Choose it now. Choose it now. Choose it now. <laughs> How are you going to let her know that you have made the choice today, that you are done, that you are over, that the new William Moorhead is being born today? <laughs> I know that I could do better, and I want better. Ah. I love myself today. Mm. And so I know through that, I'm going to heal. Mm. 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 What is your hope, dream, wish, prayer for your father? That we just enjoy the good times that we have together, you know? And, you reaching your potential. Not only that you reach your potential, but that you know that it's there and you put it to use. That his choices be guided. Tell him. By God. And Mr. Moorhead, what's your hope, dream, wish for yourself? 
to become William. Well, this is what I know. I know the pathology of the Moorhead family is now complete. And you now have the charge to create a new pathology. Open your heart, tell the truth, vote for you. I'm done with you Moorhead people. <laughs> The truth is, everybody is addicted to something. Shopping, food, sex, and yes, drugs and alcohol. We don't choose to be addicted. What we choose to do is deny our pain. The good news is that every choice you make supersedes and overrides every other choice you make. So today, you can choose to be in peace, not pieces.